Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? All right. So you may have heard some of these statistics, but 50%, 50% of businesses fail within their first year. 80% of businesses don't make it to the five-year mark. 96% of businesses file their dissolution papers before they hit their 10th anniversary. 96% of businesses go out of business before they are 10 years old. Why is this? It's not because people don't know how to run a business. It's not because people can't find good employees. It's not because they don't produce quality products or provide quality services. It's because business owners are spending so much of their time and so much of their money focusing on selling their products. They're focusing on building their business. They're not spending enough of their time or enough of their energy on building a brand. A business brand is what takes a business past its 10th year of business. Having a solid brand is what allows that business to go from year five into year six and on. I have been working on building a business since 2005. In the past six or seven years, I have been really solidly focusing on not just building a business, but building a brand. So I've become pretty passionate about this subject, and that's why I'm here today talking about building a brand, specifically mastering your brand image, so that you can keep your business in business past the five-year mark, past the 10-year mark, past the time when your products have completely morphed into something different. So what is a brand? A lot of business owners think they spend pretty good, a pretty good amount of money, pretty good amount of time investing in the things that help them market their business. Uh, they're, they're hiring graphic designers, they're hiring photographers, they're creating things that they think is a brand. We're gonna talk about some of the things that a brand is not, so we can kind of go into what a brand actually is. And first and foremost, your brand is not your logo. Your brand is not your business name. You can spend thousands of dollars developing a great logo. All of the sponsors here today have fantastic logos. But if I show you this logo for some random airline company, it doesn't matter how great their logo is. It doesn't matter that they spent $8,000 for a graphic designer to make that logo. It doesn't even matter that they came up with a business name that is truly indicative of what they do. Because as soon as you walk away, you're not gonna remember this logo. You're not gonna remember this company. You need something more. You need something to remember them by so that when you see their logo again, you, something sparks in your head. Oh, that's right, that's that company. But what is it? It's not your color scheme, it's not your website design. Again, something that a lot of business owners dump a lot of time, a lot of money into. They get graphic designers, they get whole web design teams, they spend 5,000, 10,000, hundreds of thousands of dollars on building an online presence or a logo. McDonald's, great example. We all know the McDonald's brand. They've got a pretty solid color scheme. They probably spent tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars on a great website. But McDonald's website and their colors isn't all that different from the Five Guys burgers, colors, and website which really isn't all that different from TGI Fridays and isn't really all that different from Burger King. So clearly, these are not the same companies marketing to the same groups of people. Your website, your colors, your logo, these aren't the things that make your brand. And also, your brand is not the awesome products and services that you provide. Of course, of course, as a business owner, you need to be developing top-notch products. You need to be providing awesome service to your customers. But your products aren't what is going to keep you in business. How many of you have been in the WordPress industry for more than five years? How many of you are doing exactly what you were doing five years ago? One person. One person. All right. So another great example of this. Uh, 15 years ago, I wanted to get a watch. I'd walk up to the jewelry stand in my little uh, department store, and I'd, I'd pick out a watch. 30 years ago, it was a swatch. Those were pretty cool. Uh, but today, if I want to know what time it is, if I don't rely on my phone, I'm not going to go buy that watch. I'm going to get this cool thing that tracks my heartbeat. It tells me how many hours I sleep every night. It tells me how much REM sleep I get. It even tells me how many laps I swam at the pool. Oh, yeah, and it tells time. <laughs> 
bucks, 345. But what's this thing gonna be like in five years? Am I gonna buy another Fitbit? Or am I gonna get a chip put into my hand that tells me the time, sends me my text messages, lets me scan in the checkout in the grocery lane? What's it gonna be like? Clearly your brand cannot be the product that you sell. Because in five years, the product that you're selling is not going to be the same product that it was today. So what is a brand? It's not your logo, it's not your colors, it's not your website, it's not even the products that you're selling. So we're gonna start with a couple of examples of pretty well-known brands. Most of us recognize Walmart. Anyone, uh, what, does, what, what do you think of when you think of Walmart? Cheap, cheap, crowds, low prices, what else? Convenient, what else? Great inventory, inventory. Yes, check out, yes, the people in the checkout staff. I asked my six-year-old this question and he said, every Walmart's exactly the same and they have blue carts. Walmart, you guys named almost all of these. Low prices, convenient. They've got a certain type of customer. They have employee relationships. You, you know, you, you think a little bit about how Walmart uh, treats their employees. Uh, you know the convenience. They're going to have the exact same thing at every store that you go into. And they have a certain customer experience. You feel a certain way when you think about shopping at Walmart. Apple. How many of you own Apple products? How many of you own more than one Apple product? Did anyone put their hand down? Why do people buy Apple? They don't buy, <laughs> why? <laughs> Does it work? They don't, they don't buy Apple phones because they are technically better than their Samsung counterparts. They don't buy Apple products because they make the best software. Most of the people in this room that have an Apple computer are probably running Microsoft Word. Why didn't you just buy a Microsoft computer? You don't buy Apple products because they're so much better. You certainly don't buy them because they're cheaper than their counterparts. No, you buy Apple and you continue to buy Apple because you love the brand. Apple's done something to give you an emotional connection to your brand. There's a reason that you bought your iPhone for five times more than the Samsung that was sitting next to it. And there's a reason that when the next iPhone model comes out, even though you just spent $1,000 on the last one, you're going to be the first person in line to buy the new model. Quite a few years ago, um, back in the 1990s, Apple was going through a pretty tough time. Uh, they had a downturn in sales. Uh, they weren't selling as many products. The computing age was changing. And they looked as though they were in danger of going out of business. And right around this time is when they really took a shift in their marketing. And Apple started focusing not on selling their computers, but on selling their brand. They developed a unique brand that people could relate to. They came up with a corporate culture. They made it their vision, and they made it known that they were going to empower people through technology. They put Apple computers in all of the schools. They created a unique and consistent visual image, along with a unique and consistent vocabulary. If you open up a new MacBook and you start the installation process, you get the hello screen, right? You open up your iPhone, same thing. iPad, same thing. You open up the box, what do you get? A little black booklet with the Apple logo on it, and the first word you see, hello. Super consistent. Apple has established trust with their customers, and for this reason, they have gained customers for life. Mark Loeb, a marketer and author of Emotional Branding, uh, wrote an article talking about the 1990 collapse of Apple and how they were able to rebound. And he said, without the brand, Apple would be completely dead. The brand is what they have. That's all they have. It's the power of their brand that keeps them al alive. It has absolutely nothing to do with the products. So to summarize all of that, your brand is exactly how other people feel about your business. Your brand is what makes people want to buy from you. Your brand is what makes people keeping, coming back to purchase from you again and again. Your brand is why you have customers before you release your next product. So take a second to look at all of these different logos. Uh, most, most companies that are well known 
will evoke certain emotions inside of you. How do you feel when you think about Walmart? How do you feel when you think about Target? How do you feel when you think about your cable provider, your cell phone provider? How do you feel about the social media networks that you spend half of your day on? How do you feel about Uber and Lyft? Looking at these logos is not just pretty pictures on a screen. There's an emotional connection that you have behind all of these because of the experiences that you've had which each, with each and every one of these companies. Your brand is the emotional connection that people have to your business. It is how people feel about your business, but most importantly, your brand is how people talk about your business. If people feel warm and fuzzy about your business, if they have a great sense of who you are as a company, they're going to talk positively about you to their friends, to their family, to your other customers. Likewise, if people get a bad experience about your brand, if people don't understand what your brand is, if they, don't, if they get confused by your brand messaging, they're gonna talk badly about your brand. Which begs the question, does your, <laughs> does your brand spark joy? A joyful brand is gonna make other people feel joyful and they're gonna be super excited and super happy to share their experience working with your brand with their friends and family. If they don't have a good experience or if they don't have an experience at all because you don't have a brand, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna throw it out. Doesn't spark joy. Let's discard it. So inevitably, the bad news here, if your brand is how other people feel about your business and the emotional connection that other people have, your customers are really the ones who determine your brand. So what are we gonna do about this? The good news is that you do have control over how people perceive your business. And this is what we're about to talk about. What I'm gonna talk about today is how you can turn your customers into your brand advocates. Six simple things that you can do in your business to help you master your brand image so that your customers are crystal clear on who you are as a company and want to come back and continue to purchase from you. How do we do this? So your customers are gonna interact with your company in a lot of different places. They're gonna find your website. They're gonna see you on social media. Uh, they're gonna have content, emails, videos. Uh, you've got meetings in person. You've got meetings over the phone. You've got your employees talking to your customers. You've got you as a business owner talking to your employees. Uh, you're networking, you're in conferences. Your customers are gonna interact with your uh, company in a lot of places, and the key here is to be super consistent. There are six different areas that you need to have extreme consistency in so that your customers aren't confused about what your brand is, so that they know what they should feel about their brand and how they should talk to other people about your brand. As Steve Jobs said, he knew a little bit about marketing. Marketing is about values. So the first thing the first step in mastering your brand image is going to be to determine what your brand values are. This exercise right here, this is a three hour exercise that is gonna be more valuable than a $10,000 website. This exercise for three, four hours of brainstorming is going to bring more to your business than the best design logo you can afford. Create values that your customers will care about, create values that you will care about. If you have a team, Get them involved with this process. A few years ago, my team and I sat down and we had a list of 100 different values. Personal values, corporate values, and everybody sat down and highlighted the values that rang true to them. And we talked about it for an hour. Why? Why is customer service important to you? Why is being responsive important to you? Why is having fun important to you? Why is community, why is family? Why are all of these things important to you? And we came up with a clear set of brand values for our business. And these change, they modify over time. Our customers change a little bit. The products and services we're, we're selling change. But every time we have a full team meeting on the first page of the agenda, I make sure that I list our brand values. What do we care about? What do our customers care about? What are we showing our customers? This gives you something to sell. It's your customers to understand what your values are know more about your business. 
Grand Valleys can help you get out of really, really sticky situations. Eight, ten years ago, Taco Bell got slapped with a big class action lawsuit for selling fake meat. Meat that's not meat. Anyone remember that? Yeah. Ah. So they, they were in, they could have been, I mean, this could have been doom for Taco Bell. Uh, they had thousands of people. This was all over the newspapers, all over television, all over social media. Holy cow, Taco Bell is not selling real meat. So what did they do? They leaned on their brand values. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Taco Bell has some brand values, including humor and honesty. So they published full-page advertisements saying, thanks for suing us. Tongue in cheek, let's be super honest here. Yeah, the beef we buy is 100% beef, but nah, that taco filling ain't 100% beef. You know why? Because plain ground beef is boring. So here's our recipe. Here are the other ingredients we put into there. Here's our honesty. Let's tell you all about the reason that we add these things. And then they went even a step further. They released a series of cartoon commercials uh, with Mr. Bland and his llama trying to spread blandness all over the universe. People eating bland food for lunch and the super delicious ingredient force from Taco Bell steps in and they put all their secret ingredients in and they just change up their recipe a little bit because, because plain hamburger is just boring. Their brand values, humor, honesty. This got way more social media coverage, way more interest, way more advertising than the class action lawsuit. Their brand recovered from this. They could have been in a seriously sticky place. Last night, we walked by a Taco Bell cantina in Newport Beach. Their brand is only growing. So you've got your brand values. You know why you're in business. You know. Your customers know what you value. Your customers are going to want to work with you because they relate to your brand values. The next thing you have to do is tell them why you're different. Has anyone heard of a unique selling proposition? So a USP, unique value proposition, unique selling proposition, is the one thing that makes you stand out from your competition. What are you doing that's different? This is another great exercise. This might take you a little bit longer. You may have to do some significant market research. Another thing to bring your team in on, if you work with contractors, if you hire out photographers, make sure they know your unique selling proposition as well and make it the lifeblood of your business. We incorporate our USP for website developers who answer the phone. We incorporate that into everyday talk in our office. And we put little humor twists on it. But when you bring your USP, what makes you different into your business and make that the focal point of, of what you're doing, put it on the homepage of your website, have it as a headline on the About Us page, your customers are going to start to see that. They're going to start to remember that. And that's what's going to make them different. Every time I go to a marketing meeting or a networking meeting and I stand up and I get my 60 second commercial in front of 30 people and I have 60 seconds to talk, the first thing I say is our unique selling proposition. The last thing I say is our unique selling proposition. And that is the, la the only thing that people leave the room remembering. They don't care about all the services that I want to sell them. What they care is why we're different. If you have a team, absolutely. Bring them in on your brand values, bring them in on your USP, but give them a purpose. Give your team members a why. Why are they coming to work every day? Why do they want to help your customers? Why do they want to help your company? LinkedIn and Imperative uh, released a study in 2016, surveyed a whole lot of people. Most adults spend most of their waking time at work, yet only 30% of the people they surveyed were satisfied with their jobs. And the reason for that was because they didn't know why they were going to work. They were going to work to collect a paycheck. They didn't have a goal. Their company didn't have values. 58%, and this is part of the survey. I'll go back. If you want to take a picture of this slide, I, I would recommend, this is great. Uh, that's a short link directly to a PDF, uh, full, re full results of the survey. There's a lot of interesting information in there, great for uh, business owners to read through. I'll go back. I'll be there for a sec. But they found, by and large, that companies who paid attention to their values 
and companies who involve their employees in their values and in their goals, and they make goals that gave employees a reason and a purpose to come to work every day. 58% of companies with clearly defined visions, goals, purposes saw a 10%, more than 10% increase in growth, while 42% who did nothing, did not give their employees a goal, did not give them a reason, actually saw a decline in their business. Giving employees a purpose, a goal, a vision, a reason, is not just gonna make them wanna come to work every day, it's gonna make them form stronger bonds with their other coworkers. They're all going to get behind your company's vision. It's going to lead to a more productive workplace, it's going to lead to longer employee retention, and it's going to lead to a much better product at the end of the day. A quote out of the, this is in the intro to the study that LinkedIn did, Imagine what would happen if every person in your company was connected to a purpose, to a job that mattered to them. Imagine how much more productive they would be. Think of what we could collectively accomplish. You have the power to make work more meaningful. You can create engagement by inspiration, by connecting purpose to your work. So the first three parts of building your brand is really about the emotional connection. What can you do to emotionally connect your customers to your business values, to your business vision? How can you bring your employees in to get on board with your values, with your vision? Next, it boils down to what business owners are dumping a lot of their money into, which is the actual design, the logos, the visual aspects, uh, content. Keeping your content cons consistent is a huge way to make sure that people don't get confused about what your brand message is. How do you do this? The easiest way to create consistent content is to pull your values, your goals, your vision into every piece of content that you write. If you think, hey, let's write this next paragraph with our primary vision in mind, you're probably gonna create a consistent message throughout every platform that you advertise on. If you have a website with content written in one tone of voice, make sure that your social media matches the style that you're using on your website. Make sure that your brochures match. A thing you can do is create a voice guide for your brand. Talk about the uh, person you want to talk in. First person, second person, third person. Along with keeping your content consistent, keep your colors, icons, pictures. I showed this slide to my six-year-old and he bust out laughing. And I'm like, why do you think this is so funny? And he said, well, you're giving a talk on penguins. Why'd you put a giraffe in there? Stop doing this with your business. People do this all the time. How many times have you gotten a business card from someone with super swirly fancy gold embossed ink and you go to their website and it's using a different color and different font? How many times have you had a takeout menu from a Chinese restaurant and you don't know if that's the right takeout menu because the sign that's hanging above their establishment is different color or because it's exactly the same takeout menu as the Chinese shop down the road? Yeah. <laughs> Stop doing this. Make sure that all of your colors are consistent across all of your branding. If you have red business cards, have a red website. Have red flyers. If you use Open Sans font on your website, use it on your letterhead. Put it on your business card. It's not that difficult to do. You can create a brand guide. In the next slide on here, I have a link uh, to a template that you can use to create your own brand guide. But some things that you want to include in this are going to be information about your photographer. Who's writing content for you? Who are your graphic designers? It's a really great idea for all of the people who are playing a part in designing for your brand or writing for your brand can connect with each other or have, or have resources to be able to. Um, so here's an example brand style guide. Something I definitely re recommend every business take the time to do. So we're gonna include in this your logo. You're gonna have the colors that you're using. Make sure you have them in all different forms that your print, that your embroidery, that your website, graphic design, RGB, CMYK, hex. Make sure that you use consistent contact information. You have 15 different phone numbers that route to different places. Let's simplify that. Let's have one phone number. Do you have a PO box and a street address? Why are we confusing our customers here? Let's pick one. 
Do you have an email address at Yahoo, but a website at your domain? What's going on here? Let's create some consistency. Make sure that every place you're publishing your contact information is the same. Create a tagline that matches your brand values. Put those in your brand style guide. List your unique selling proposition. Put your goals, your vision, your mission. Put in an example of content that you would use on your website. Maybe pull out the first paragraph on your homepage so anyone who's working with your business knows how you talk about your business. Circulate your brand guide to your graphic designers. Give it to your photographers. In fact, put your graphic designer's information on your brand guide. Put your photographer's information on your brand guide. If you rely on stock photos, pick one stock photo source. Try to pick one photographer or at least pick a couple photographers that have similar style and put that information on your brand guide so that anybody who's working for you or part of your brand, your employees, yourself, has a clear vision and knows exactly how they need to move forward. Finally, and this is the most important one, we've got our values, we've got our USP, we've got a purpose, we've got colors, we've got a logo. Make sure you're representing your brand everywhere you go in person. You're attending meetings with your customers, you're taking sales calls, you're answering the phone, you're going to networking events, maybe you're here at a conference today as part of your company. Uh, maybe you donate, maybe you run philanthropic events, maybe you host uh, fundraisers for local charities. Maybe your team just goes on a bunch of social outings. Fall back on your brand image. Refer to your brand guide before you go out. So, if you're maybe running a business with black and red colors, you use an animal as one of your, lo as your logo elements. You like to speak at conferences and so you put slide decks together, right? It might be a good idea when you attended conferences that your slide decks matched your branding, maybe a little bit. If you have a professional headshot on your website, it might be a good idea that that professional website's not six years old so that when people see you, they can recognize who you are. You might even consider dressing in a similar fashion. I don't know. Make it super easy. Don't confuse your customers. If I was standing up here in a full length dress, y'all would be like, who is that person standing at the front of the room? Be consistent. Be consistent in all of your marketing. Have consistent brand values. Talk about them with your employees. Share them with your team. Create a unique selling proposition. People don't fall in love, or people don't buy from Apple. People don't buy from Microsoft because of the product that they sell. They buy because they love the brand. Is a summary. My slides are up online. Feel free to download them or tweet me. And I think we have time for some questions. <laughs> Any questions? No, maybe? Yes? Uh, is your tagline your um, tagline the same as your USP? It can be. The question is, is the tagline the same as your USP? It can be. Um, in our case, our, our USP is we're web developers who answer the phone, and so we do pretty much use that as our tagline. Um, but a lot of businesses will have a unique selling proposition that is not exactly the same as their tagline. Tagline should be super memorable, should be short. Yes. I'll repeat. <laughs> the question was, do we do personality assessments for our teams? We do, actually. Um, we have every team member take the Strengths Finder assessment, uh, usually right after they start, oftentimes prior to starting, depending on their role in the company. We just went through a really big team building session where we did Myers-Briggs personality uh, typing, and we spent a full day talking about our personality types and just really breaking it down. Um, personality typing, definitely a great, a great way to get insight about the strengths that your individual team members have. Um, lean on those, absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? Five minutes? We got five more minutes. Yeah. Does your, does your brand 
The question is, does your event brand evolve over time? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, especially in this industry, things are changing. Uh, for us, for us uh, specifically, you know, we have, we have grown and gone from you know, just a one-person team to a two-person team to a four-person team to a nine-person team. And so the type of customer that we work with has changed as our business has changed. The type of products that we enjoy, projects that we enjoy working on have changed. Um, so yeah, the brand can change. Um, like I said earlier, you know, it's really great to maintain consistency for as long as you can. There have been companies that have gone through complete rebranding with success. I would say the core elements behind your brand, your values, your USP to some extent, although that can change, but, but your values should remain consistent. And if you are going to make a change, you know, change in a way that makes sense to your customers and don't confuse your customers. Make sure they know why you're changing. Be super open about the change. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the question was, you know, for bigger companies, you obviously need to have kind of the corporate brand, but a lot of freelancers, they've got themselves as their personal brand, and then they have their company that they're running a freelancer under. Should you distinguish those? And I think the answer is really it depends. Are people buying from you because they know you and they like you? Can you use your strengths, your values, your mission to further build out your brand? I think that any business owner that starts a business with brand values that are completely opposite from their personal values is just setting themselves up to fail. So in some respects, even large corporations, the very heart of it, there has to be someone who is connecting emotionally the owner of the business to those values. That's what makes them work. Right? Any other questions? No? All right. Thank you, everyone.